Thanks, uh, James, for your time. Uh, we started having a chat about the uh, the uh, BDP one yeah. and the DAC combo. Uh, what can you tell me about the technologies involved? In? Well, basically, the whole concept with the BDP one for me was trying to figure out how to get high resolution playback uh, happening without uh, a lot of the problems that you, you had to be almost like a bit of an IT geek mm -hmm. to figure out, okay, what sound card are we going to use, what operating system, so on and so forth. So I thought there's got to be a better way to do this. So the idea was I, I took a very high quality CPU, very high quality sound card uh, that we built, and a nice quality power supply and put it essentially in this box. Yeah. So the idea here, this is an independent box uh, called a BDP-1. So in this box is the CPU, the power supply, the output stage, which is a digital output section that then feeds your DAC, whether it's our DAC or another DAC. But there's no moving parts. There's no noise. There's nothing in there that can generate noise, so you have a very, very low noise floor. And then I decided, you know what? I wanted to have something that wasn't a dead box because the problem with it is, again, unless you can get on the network and unless you can deal with the network, you're done. So the idea was, but why don't I set, decide to do something that looks essentially and works like a CD player? So, for instance, on here, if you uh, load the USB, which comes with it when you buy it, okay. you plug in the USB. The USB comes up. You choose Bryston, you hit play, you got music. Okay. And then you can call your 16-year-old and try to figure out how to get on the network. Sure. Right? What's the capacity of the USB? Um, whatever you buy. So a terabyte, uh, if you want. Uh, I usually recommend 500. There's two connections on the back, two on the front. So right. on the backs, I usually say, you know, stick a 500 gig or whatever on the back. Sure. So it's not designed for someone who wants to have... 50,000 albums and play them throughout the house and so on and so forth. Yeah. It's really, that's the wrong product for them. But if you want a highly dedicated, high quality product, this is it. Sure. The other problem is you can't stream beyond 44.1. So then you're into all kinds of issues if you want to do 96, 176 and so on. Right. right. Yeah. So that was the other side of it is I wanted something that wouldn't have hiccups and problems doing that. Yeah. So this is a hard connection. You're actually taking a USB drive and plugging it in and it's operating accordingly. So you have a very low noise, very low distortion system that you can use. Terrific. Yeah. Okay. Then the other option is if you decide that you can you figure out how the hell to get on your network, uh -huh. you can then go, we have a number of different apps that we develop. So one's called Max. So that's designed for the iPad or um, above. So a laptop, full-size desk computer. Okay. So you can see it comes up and it just shows you there's the USBs. So it operates exactly the same way that the front panel would. There's two USBs loaded. If I wanted to go into the Bryston USB, there it is. If I wanted to play that particular song, I could, mm -hmm. or I could load them all, and then I can just hit play and it plays. Okay. And then there's album art. Uh, if you want to open up and look at the back, in terms of the album art, where you can spin it around to uh, show the, the front of the album art or close it accordingly. Okay. Now. Because it's a Linux-based operating system, it's open source, mm -hmm. it's dedicated to doing nothing but playing a music file. So it's not doing any housekeeping, it's not looking for what virus am I going to worry about, so it's sure. dedicated to that. Right. So there are applications that will talk to this unit already on the market that are free. One of them is from uh, Mac, which you just downloaded, it's called MPOD, and it operates exactly the same way. You go into Browse, USB, Bryston, and then you would choose the file you want to play. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's lots of programs on the market that will that will integrate and interface with it if you want. But I wanted to have our version as well, so that a customer wasn't sort of stuck with a third-party application in case they changed it or there was other some some other problems. Sure. Yeah. Do you think that because it's a computer-related component, do you think that's been a, a, a form of a stumbling stumbling block for? Hardcore audio files? Um, yes and no. Stumbling, the stumbling box, I think most audio files are coming around to the idea that digital done right or computer done right can sound very analog ish. Yes. Right? In fact, that's the feedback we're getting on the player. And people just absolutely love the way it sounds. The stumbling block, honestly, has been people think it's a server. Okay. And so, can it do this? Can it do this? Can it stream to my cottage? No, it can't. Right. You know, it's a dedicated player. So that's the only problem I've had. Sure. Once people actually listen to it, it's been great. Right. You know, okay. they just love it. So. Well, based on that same, based on what you just said, mm -hmm. uh, is Bryson looking at maybe doing a server at, at some stage? You know, what we're thinking about is maybe a dedicated NAS drive. Okay. That yes. would then integrate with this automatically. So you plug in both. It sees it. You load whatever you want on the NAS drive and go from there. Sure. That's the other nice thing about the DAC is it will show you the native file. But if you want to upsample that native file, 
you just hit the up sample button on the remote or, or on here. Sure. Have you done the test in terms of uh, sonic comparisons? Yeah, and it's about 50-50 at this point from the customer base. Some people will call me and say, oh, big difference of the up sample. Yeah. Other people will call me and say, I don't hear much of a difference. Uh, I tend to prefer playing things at their native file size. Yeah, I, I find that yeah. um, <clears throat> the less you're manipulating the signal. The less math involved, the better. That's exactly, yeah. yeah. And that's what I like about the native high-res stuff, because, yeah. you know, you can actually play it back at the native at, resolution. At its native right, exactly. exactly. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it works out really well. Terrific. Yeah. Now, just a question about your amplifiers. Yeah. Uh, the two series have been yeah. out for a uh, couple a year, of years now? A year and a half, depending on the vert on the model. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, see. Okay. We started with, and that's an interesting con concept, the, the two series. What happened was, with power amplifiers, there's a, let's call it a power bandwidth, where, where it's most natural, most at home. Right. So in the case of, think of it like a torque curve in your car. Right. There's a place at which the, you know, the, the pull in the car, the efficiency, and all that stuff comes together. Sweet spot. With, a, with an amplifier, it's about third power. So at one third power, you're getting maximum no, like <coughs> whole noise, high efficiency, all that stuff. So we thought, it, we built an amp that it didn't care. In other words, the power bandwidth was from one watt to a thousand watts. Right. So we built the 28B, thousand mm -hmm. watt amp. Yeah on that basis and we released it as SST yeah. and people absolutely loved it and we did too. So we decided to move that technology down into the rest of the product line sure. and that's when we changed everything over to the two. So right. the whole concept was what I call first and last watt yeah. is that they're all operating at the same quality. Yeah. And that's how they, the uh, SST came about. Sure. Yeah. Are, you, are you planning an update on, on the SST2 product? Nothing in the works at this point. Okay. Yeah, we've heard of, you know, we're always looking, obviously, you're looking, can you do this better, can you do that better, but at this sure. point, it's, it's uh, you know, we've stretched it as far as we can for now anyway. And it, okay. usually, if you look at our history, 40 years we've been doing this, um, I would say every five to seven years, something comes along that improves the technology to the point where you can use it in a different way. Sure. And that's when you make those changes. Yeah. 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 I mean, your warranty but it alone is very, very generous, yeah. Too, yeah. isn't it? it looks like and if you think about it, a friend of mine years and years ago said to me, if you think about hi-fi as a barbed wire, and you know, you're over the years, you're just sawing down the barbs. Right, okay. And, all that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and that's kind of where the amps go. You know, if you look at a 20 year old one, you look at it now, we're just we're sawing good. down those barbs sure, as we go. Sure. Right? Yeah, so it works out good. Okay, well, thank you very much, James. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah, thank Pleasure. You. Okay. Take care. Okay.